I yeah. hope you guys can hear me. I think I had some audio problems. Um, I wanted to welcome you all to the KIS student panel. Yep. My name is Colleen Fontenot, and I am the Director of Admissions and Marketing at KIS. And on behalf of the entire admissions team, I wanted to welcome you to tonight's event, where we will be hearing from students in our MYP and DP program about their experience as students at KIS. Uh, we were discussing that we think that there's no better way to get to know a school than to hear from the students themselves. So we've assembled a group of students uh, who will tell you a little bit about their experiences, whether that's adapting to the IB curriculum or starting their own clubs. Um, and at the end, we will have time for a Q&A. So please feel free to use the chat function throughout our presentation. We will be hearing from a lot of fantastic students and we want to make sure that we hear your voices and answer your questions as well. Um, and our students are so capable that they wanted to run this event. And so our MC for the night is our student council president. Um, at the very end, Please uh, stay on for the last bit because we will be hearing from Mike Hirsch, our secondary principal, about an exciting new program that we will be offering uh, KIS 11th and 12th graders starting in August of 2022. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our student council president, Yash. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, thank you, Ms. Colleen. Um, as she said, my name is Yash Tandia. And for this evening, we have 10 brilliant students, student panelists prepared for you. Um, each one of them will share with you their experience at KIS. So please feel free to type in any questions that you may have into the chat as they will be answered once everyone else, once all the students have finished speaking. Um, without any further ado, I'll start with my experience here. So uh, this is my sixth year at KIS and I moved from uh, for those that may know, Bal Bharati School in India, New Delhi. And when I joined KIS, I was a very timid kid. Um, I didn't like to put myself out there at all. I preferred to just sit in that corner and be with myself. But that all changed towards the end of grade six, where a teacher of mine, uh, Mr. Tree, encouraged me to join KIS's student council. For those that may not know, uh, the Student Council is the student governing body at KIS, meaning we not only represent the students, but uh, we also uh, are the go-to people whenever the administration requires any form of student input. Um, and the best part of it all is that we get to host several fun events for the students throughout the entire year. And if you could please go to the next slide. As the current student president, there are a lot of responsibilities that I have to meet, but I do not regret that decision of mine to join this and continue developing my skills because a student council gave me this opportunity to put myself out there. And right now, that is the thing I love to do the most. Currently, every other week, I go up in front of about 400 people and just talk for about an hour. And I'm not afraid to do that anymore. It has sort of become a thing that I do and well, I'm known about. So I know that the things that I'm learning, the skills that I'm developing by being a member of this uh, student council of this body are gonna last with me for an entire lifetime. But the best thing about student council is that, every, uh, that sense of fulfillment that I get when I, whenever there's an event hosted, an activity hosted, and I get to see the smiles that are on everybody else's faces. This image in front of you is from Sports Day. Sports Day. It's, it's um, an event that is held uh, annually towards the end of the year. And on it, we put up, uh, it's the entire day dedicated to sports and sports only. And that was a very gruesome day for me because student council, at least the executive team, was responsible of hosting this event. And although it was gruesome, the smiles that I could see on everybody's faces, the happiness that was around the school, the joyous uh, feeling that was buzzing in the air, um, it was all worth it. So I really am thankful to Mr. Tree, who pushed me on, who encouraged me to put myself out there to take that step forward. 
and put myself out there in front of all these people, this wonderful community who not only accepted all the things that I'm doing, but also encouraged me to continue doing them. And I've been doing so for about the last five years. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Um, now we have Sanya, who will talk to you about her uh, a club that he started and her achievements. What a wonderful story, Yash. Thank you for the introduction. Hey everyone, I'm Sanya, and I'm gonna talk about my medical club and my achievements. So when I first arrived at KIS, not too long ago, I never imagined I would be at a place where I am now this early. So we started our university counseling really early with the help of well-informed and well-experienced university counselors who got our minds running on what we wanted to do beyond KIS to look at the bigger picture. University, university counseling here at KIS is about setting goals for our future and achieving them with the right support and guidance. Next slide, please. So after being sure that my path is medicine at university, I went straight into doing what is required of me as a future applicant. But where do I start and what do I do? That's where this counseling gave me the biggest push. After being informed that I would be required to perform service, hold clubs, and be experienced in the medical field, I took advantages of the resources that KIS has by, by creating a club to inspire like-minded medical students by sharing opportunities with doctors in Thailand and other opportunities that would give us the right experience and education on medicine. And to give back to my community, I also created Bloom Bangkok to advocate for, educate people and raise funds about period poverty to bring light on this shadowed issue. Under the medical club and the help of our university counselors here, we get access to resources that we are otherwise unable to do on our own such as chances to study about medicine alongside doctors in real time on topics such as surgery and cardiology, as well as insights on what admission off admissions officers want to see in our interviews and personal statements for medicine to be more prepared in our application process. I was also encouraged and supported throughout my entire journey of applying to a summer medical program for a scholarship by Cambridge University for next year where I proved to be successful and could not have done so without the correct guidance from teachers and counselors at KIS. KIS students are always, always looking for ways to make use of our free time to do something that will not only benefit our future, but also gain the most knowledge possible. I was accepted into two summer medical programs, as well as a workshop where I learned how to do basic medical procedures such as CPR, and also learning a lot about medicinal technologies that would be required to know as medicine is becoming more and more modern. Gaining access to limited resources on the internet with the help of supervisors at KIS, I am learning something new almost every day through shadowing or learning about medicine with doctors. And I had also gained an internship at a clinic here in Bangkok where I learned more in a week than I would have through just researching. It is the motivation and drive that we get from such a young age by knowing what we want that leads us to achieve great things. I have just started the diploma program here at KIS and I'm able to focus entirely on my academics instead of extracurriculars because KIS had given me everything I needed before getting into such a hard stage that I do not need to worry about applying to university anymore. I'm all set. Thank you. And next we'll talk about, and next Caden will talk about his journey for sports here at KIS. Sanya, that was great. Thank you for the transition to me. Um, hello everyone. I'm Caden Carabin. You can just call me Caden. I am a grade 12 student and I've been in the school for around 10 to 11 years now. So I guess you can say I've seen basically everything within the school. And for this panel, I'll be talking about my experiences with sports, and I've experienced quite a lot, such as sports like basketball, football, or soccer, however you want to pronounce it, volleyball, dance, track and field, and much more. KIS is one of the schools that are open to all students when it comes to athletics. If you aren't that talented at a sport you would like to play or join into, the coaches and teammates are bound to help you no matter what so you can get to the top of your game. And that's what I've been through. So here we can see that the KIS basketball team have won many tournaments and games in general. 
going from fourth place to first place in almost every single tournament and winning almost every single match. The KIS volleyball team is also one of the sports that are currently rising in popularity. I've been playing for around a year or two now, and the team and I have come fourth and third place in two different tournaments in only one year. Football and or soccer, again, however you want to pronounce it, is one of our better sports that we play, winning probably 10 times the amount of medals and trophies than any of the other sports here. I'm sure I'm exaggerating that, but I, I know there's a lot more to that. And for all the dancers out there, you're actually in luck because KIS does have a dance team. Competing in both inside and outside competitions against other schools, my dance team called Crossroads has won first place varsity and first place overall in a dance competition called KIS Got's Talent, as well as KPIS, which is held to go against other schools outside of campus. And lastly, track and field. Track and field is one of our harder sports, I'd have to say, in our school. And I, I believe that I've done pretty well. I've competed in long jump, triple jump, the 200 and 100 meter sprint, as well as the relay race that is held at the end. I've won three gold medals over the past three years in 200 meters sprint and triple jump, and almost reaching the university level length, which is probably about 11.5 meters. And I guess that shows how good our coaches are here at KIS. Other than the teammates and I, however, we're also students and that we need to enter our classes. And it's not just purely on sports. And we're considered to be what is called student athletes. Me as a student athlete has worked on my time management thoroughly to keep track of my schedule and to make sure that I'm not being behind on any of the work. And so I can also work on my sports. And over the past few years, I've had a very, very, very strong relationship with my teammates, coaches, and even younger students. I managed to work as an assistant coach for the junior varsity basketball and volleyball team, teaching them my skills and techniques that I've learned over the past few years to the younger ones. Other than that, I'm so thankful to be talking to you all about this. And if there's anything at all, you can just ask a couple questions and I'll try my best to answer. And next up, I'll bring it on to Sadie. Thank you for that very thorough presentation, Kaden. Um, as a fellow student athlete, I can also relate to a lot of what you have said and agree with what you have said as well. Um, that being said, hi everyone. My name is Sadie. I am a, currently a grade 10 student in the last year of MYP at KIS. And today I'm going to be talking about something a bit different, but it will basically be a bit of a story time. And I'll be telling you about my experience being new at KIS as well as transitioning into an IB school slash an IB system. So to start off, I'll talk a bit about my background. I actually initially joined KIS in EY1, which is basically the earliest you could possibly join the school. And I was probably three years old. I stayed at KIS for about five years until my family decided to initially move to Phuket, which is an island in Thailand, if any of you are unfamiliar, and then later to New York City in the US. And in these two different places, I went through two different school systems, which were pretty different and spent what I would what would be considered my middle school years. But soon enough, my family was planning to move once again. However, this time we would be coming back to Bangkok, Thailand, where I grew up and where I would soon begin high school. And this was about two and a half years ago, which is very crazy to think about. But it was the summer of 2019 when we began to look at schools and go on tours and eventually, as I am here now, we landed back in KIS about eight years later. So when looking at different schools, my parents allowed me to take the lead and play a pretty big part in deciding kind of where I wanted to go and narrowing my options down and then making that final decision. And while we looked at a bunch of different schools, for me, it quickly became apparent as to which one I was most excited about. Reflecting on my past experience at KIS, as young as I was then, ultimately helped me make the decision now. The largest thing that drew me back here, as cliche as it sounds, is that sense of family and the tight-knit community that I felt so strongly as a five-year-old and I still feel today in 10th grade. And something that I was also very um, excited about was going back to a community that I once knew and loved, and that made this whole transition of moving countries and also just moving schools uh, much more easy for me. 
That being said, to be completely honest, the first day was pretty terrifying. The IV school system is very intimidating and a bit confusing in the beginning, especially coming from a more traditional American school system and not really having that much experience with IB at all. However, in a few weeks to months time, I quickly got the hang of things, which 100% was only possible because of the support I got from my teachers, who helped to explain everything that was expected as of me as an IV student, and also from my peers who just talked me through everything and would help me with certain assignments or any questions, if I had any questions. I was quickly able to step up my academic caliber and grow as a learner, even in a new and somewhat unfamiliar environment. And this really pushed me and motivated me even more as I had all this support coming from my teachers as well as my peers. And although academics is a huge part at life of life at KIS. As a new student, I found that it's not always the easiest to socialize or form those deep connections in a classroom environment, which is why I was very relieved that there is also a life outside the classroom at KIS and things such as sports teams, spirit activities, and something that is pretty unique to the school, family time, allowed me to branch out and meet new people. And I would already say that because there are new students coming in every year, everyone is super open and inviting, and you can fit in very quickly here. But as one of one of the things I'm going to be talking about specifically is the idea of family time. So this year it's a bit different because of COVID, but last year family time happened every day for about 15 to 20 minutes. And everyone is basically assigned this family or group, and it's made up of a teacher and then about eight to 10 students across grade levels. And this designated time that the school set aside in the schedule is a time not to worry about academics or anything like that, but instead just socialize with each other, play games and have that time for social emotional learning in our day. Also, it's for the most part all student led, so we really have the ability to choose what we want to do with that time. And although it's only for a few minutes every day, the fact that it happens every single day with the same group of people really allows you to form these extremely close bonds with those people. And for me, it was how I was able to connect, reconnect with some of my old friends, but also form such strong new friendships. And as you can see on this slide, here are our family photos that were taken from last year. So it's all overall, it's just a very fun little thing that KIS has implemented into the schedule. And so thank you so much for listening. And now I will be handing it over to Frenick, who will be telling us about his experiences um, with drama. Thank you, Sadie. You'd be surprised a lot of the uh, cool aspects in the smooth transition um, from your story from coming to KIS are not just unique to you. But either way, I'll explain in a second. Hi, everyone. I'm Franciszek Maurer, but here I simply go by Franek. I'm from Poland. Currently, I'm a grade 10 student, and I have attended KIS for four years, as in this is my fifth year. That being said, KIS was the first international school I've ever attended, or any English-speaking school for that matter. So as you can imagine, the last four years of my life have been pretty transformative, going from an average Polish school to a very highly ranked IB um, school halfway across the globe. But let's take it from the start. Just five years ago, I attended a, a private but pretty average Polish school with a regular national curriculum. That entails my English um, and really my education was very mediocre and so my future did not extend past the borders of my own country but one day i get the big news that i'm moving to thailand in five months and well the 11 year old me was petrified as i could not speak english and had no clue how i was going to make friends or communicate with teachers slight change please so as you can see in this picture that's the 11 year old me on a flight to bangkok petrified of what's about to happen. So when I eventually got to KS, I was placed in one of the lowest possible levels of EL. And for those that do not know, EAL is, um, stands for English as Additional Language. And it's a class that KS provides for less experienced English speakers so that they can quickly get up to speed on their language. And to my surprise, I felt pretty welcome to the school. And that's not only thanks to the teachers and the staff as you would expect normally, but also to, thanks to my peers, 
who are used to welcoming new faces every year due to the school being international and rotating dozens of students every single academic year. So this trip, which I was absolutely dreading before, was becoming acceptable and their 11-year-old me was satisfied with the changes. But nothing major stood out to me until I discovered drama class, formerly known as the performing arts. In our first unit in grade six, we were doing this short performance, and by some chance, my group had to do a play where the main character was Russian. As you can imagine, the poor judgment of grade six students and to my Eastern European accent led me to me, led to me having the main role in our performance, despite my countless protests. But hey, it happens. And I did the performance. And to my surprise, my teacher later came up to me very satisfied and told me that I did great and that I should join the school drama club. Now, one thing you should know about 11-year-old me is that I was petrified of public performance. So I did not join the drama club for months, during which my teachers, alongside my friends at this point, were telling me every day that I need to join the drama club. So eventually I did and absolutely fell in love with it. The rehearsals, the family, the feeling, and the rush of waiting backstage for your scene was an eye-opening experience for me, and I'm forever grateful to my teacher and friends who encouraged me to join. As with Drama Club, I discovered a deep passion of mine, which I just do not think would happen in a different environment. And ever since, I've been able to pursue my passion, joining the Drama Club every single year. I developed my presentation skills and massively improved my confidence on stage. In fact, I was able to progress for the entirety of EEL in just one academic year. And thanks to all of my performances, I became completely fluent in English in, again, by the end of grade six. More importantly, however, thanks to the all-encompassing IB curriculum, I was able to not only improve, but also apply my newfound skills. Next uh, slide change, please. Thank you. Uh, I was also able to apply my newfound skills. And the biggest example of this, as you can see in this picture, would be the grade nine roundtable debate on global warming. This is a um, one hour long debate that I was uh, told to lead thanks to my public performance uh, public speaking and uh, performance skills. Furthermore, in English Socratic seminars, which we did this and last year, which are like these 40 minute group discussions of literature, I was again selected by my teachers to lead and direct the discussions. In other words, this little experience that I had in grade six that KS provided with me completely transformed me and improved me not only as a student, but also as an individual, making me much more open to new experiences and learning. And the story doesn't end here, as again, thanks to the IB curriculum, I'm able to pursue my passion throughout all years of school. Specifically right now, I'm doing this personal project. This is a massive project that all grade 10 students have to complete for the IB, and it takes approximately six months. Now, in this project, the students can select any passion of theirs and create a product based on that passion for those six months. So in my case, thanks to my discovery of my passion for drama, I'm writing and directing a short comedic play, which I will then perform in front of the entire school at the end of the year. So that's my story of transitioning into KIS, which really, while scary, was truly easy, enjoyable, and I'm forever grateful for my teachers that helped me through it. But now I'll be passing along the mic to Juan Dong and his uh, math journey in KS. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Juan Dong and I'm in ninth grade this year. I have been in this school since first grade and KIS is the first international IB school I attended. Uh, I will be talking about the opportunity the school has given me to participate in the math club and some competitions. So before coming to KIS, I used to study in a traditional Korean school where there wasn't any much sophisticated or interconnectedness between the students and the teachers, which wasn't the best environment for learning and enjoying math and forming bonds. Well, my math skills weren't as good then, and I didn't like the idea of working with numbers or even letters. However, since PIP, uh, my fifth grade teacher and other teachers had supported me more than ever in mathematics, and I've become more interested in it. And as I moved into MYP, I was given the opportunity to attend this thing called math clubs. So basically, this is a club where you can practice maths, learn new things and do it as a group. There's more direct support and collaboration between teachers and students rather than 
traditional, like normal math classes. And it helps you broaden your learning and understanding in math. So this club was opened by two of our math teachers, Mr. David and Mr. Gavin. And rather than being competitive and stressful, which most people think of when you say math, this is an opportunity that makes it more interesting and helps you be more confident and prepared for it through competitions, group practices, discussions, and so on. The club consists students from various grades, from grade six all the way to DP. Uh, despite the large variety of students, there are about 20 students, which is a great number to have a more engaging club to share ideas and communicate with students from other grades. Uh, next slide, please. So there are both regional and international competitions in this club. It is a great experience where you can build new friendships and basically learn more in maths in a fun way. So competitions are hosted by places like ASMA, University of Waterloo, or other international schools around Bangkok. So it is a place for anyone that is interested in maths and competitions, regardless of what skill level you are at. I personally joined this club in the second semester for grade seven, which happens to be the same time where COVID started happening around February and March of 2020, which was really unfortunate, meaning that we didn't have any uh, outbound traveling from Bangkok. The past year has been hard for all of us and for these competitions as well. Uh, but however, it still provides what you need to learn and practice in math through online calls. So KIS has provided me the opportunity to learn and practice my math skills in a more fun and challenging way, which makes me more prepared and confident and less worried about my skills, which is, and math skills is considered one of the most important skills in school, but it just makes it more fun, helpful, and helps you improve. And overall, it has been an interesting and challenging experience and it improved my math skills through these competitions, games, and practices. So that is basically my story for my math club uh, competitions and me, and I'll be handing the floor to Jaya now. Thank you for that lovely presentation, Huandong. And hello, everybody. My name is Jaya, and I will be talking about my singing experience here at KS. So I've been here at KS since EY2, so this is my 10th year. And I used to consider myself as a shy and quiet person because I wouldn't really participate in class discussions or anything really. But that all changed in fourth grade. When I was introducing to myself in front of the whole class, I told my teachers that I like to sing. And a few weeks later, Mr. Liam comes up to me. He was the homeroom teacher for grade four at the time. He said, Jaya, why don't you try and sing in front of the whole school during assembly today? At first, I was really against that idea. I hated public speeches or performing in a huge, for a huge audience. But the fact that Mr. Lim was encouraging and supportive and I knew that my friends would always support me no matter what, it made me confident to perform. And from that day on, it was a huge step for me to overcome my fear of public speaking. And I was comfortable enough to take in my to take in different events, such as the YTMF singing competition, which is a competition where all the students from different parts of Thailand join each other for a competition. And in this particular photo, I want a gold medal. And after that event and many events later, at the end of sixth grade, I decided to form a band with my friends. And we would practice every week, every Friday, because KAS offers an extracurricular class for band class, where I was able to connect and create more friends throughout the way. And next slide, please. And this video was in seventh grade, which was the first performance as a band in school.
So that was my first performance as a whole band in seventh grade. As I'm right now, I'm in ninth grade. And this has really transformed me into a confident person from being very shy. And now in school, when there's presentations, I used to dread it a lot. But now I think of it as an opportunity to continue and further improve my skills. Thank you. And now I will pass on to Devishi. Thank you for that fascinating story, Jaya. Hello, everybody. I'm Devishi, a, a grade 10 student. This is my fourth year at KIS, which means I joined at the very near beginning of NYP in grade seven. I've moved countries about three or four times, so you can imagine I've been to and looked at lots of different schools, both IB and non-IB. The, these include private schools in mainly Istanbul and Bangkok. Previously, I attended MEF International School. Coming to KIS, my fully IB school, I was very intimidated by the new IB middle years curriculum as I previously attended more traditional IGCSE schools. However, one thing that did help me get very familiar with the curriculum and meet new friends was something I hadn't seen in much action in other schools called service. Service at KIS indicates both direct and indirect service, which includes fundraising, campaigning, and also going directly to underprivileged communities to provide aid and learn more about the real world and our favorite organizations. Uh, to aid us in doing service, we are offered service clubs and classes. The last two years have obviously been slightly different due to COVID. However, prior to the pandemic, we used to go on out-of-city residential trips Throughout the duration of these trips, we were encouraged to plan and carry out various service learning projects. An example of this was, an, was a community service I carried out with my peers back in the seventh grade. We had flown to Shanghai for our residential trip and visited a school in the breathtaking mountains to share our international skills and culture. Here we formed valuable connections with the unique Shanghai communities and provided and exchanged educational knowledge to them as a form of service. M meanwhile, the pandemic is taking its course. We have a service learning class we are offered in grade 10, where we meet weekly to brainstorm and work on various service projects. Other than teacher-led service, students also have a lot of opportunity and resources to to create their own clubs to promote the topics such as people and that they're truly passionate about. An example of this is a club I founded back in August called Bangkok Community Hub Club of 10 students within the 10th grade. Being part of a more privileged group, I feel like it is our responsibility as a community and especially the KIS community to give back to the underprivileged communities of the city especially during times of the pandemic. Our aim of this club is to fundraise and volunteer and spread awareness about a larger foundation we're connected to that some of you may have heard about called Bangkok Community Health Foundation. So far, we have launched a feminine product drive for the women and children of the Klong Toy slums and helped paint a school that hadn't been renovated in the next, in over two decades. Uh, slide change, please. Overall outcomes of these activities and classes are extremely valuable to not only the communities, but also to us students. For instance, throughout just setting up my club, I had to develop my communication skills and collaboration skills greatly by reaching out to the foundation regularly and also getting permission to use their logo and name to build a foundation of my own club. These clubs and service activities in general help us develop so many ATL skills. Personally, these have helped me learn about so many unique, unique groups of people, develop skills, and form important lifelong connections with my peers and teachers. Other than that, such service experiences are timelessly valuable to our college applications, as mentioned before by Sonia. Next, our passionate debaters, Ray and Andy, will be speaking about their own clubs. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Devishi. Um, my name is Ray Power. I'm from grade 12. And my name is Andy Lee, and I'm also a grade 12 student here at KIS. 
Uh, today we will be discussing our experiences starting our own academic club, um, starting with a little bit on us. Uh, I first came to KIS in the sixth grade from a Thai curriculum bilingual school. Um, I had been in it for my entire life and it was a great place, but one that never really encouraged me to speak publicly. In fact, for a large portion of my childhood, I always felt embarrassed about expressing my opinions. And this made me feel very different from my peers. As, as a child, I had always loved to talk. When I arrived at KIS in sixth grade, however, it really opened up a new world for me, as I had no idea that debate was actually a proper academic activity. The respectful sharing of opinions was actually encouraged amongst peers, and this was supported by a lot of my MYP coursework, the English grade eight speech unit, as well as the aforementioned grade nine climate change roundtable debate. So I actually moved here last academic year from another international school in Bangkok. And um, as of now, I have done MUN for five years and um, WSC for four. It has helped me develop both a confidence in my public speaking skills, as well as an interest in international affairs and politics, which is actually something that leads into my university interests. Andy and I formed Debate Club on our, based on our combined interest in academic events such as World Scholars Cup and MUN, as well as the foundational practice of debating itself. And the aims of our club on a larger scale include introducing more academic events such as the aforementioned to the KIS community, as we feel as though having these events will not only allow students to develop public speaking skills, but also negotiation, collaboration, and improvisation skills, as well as getting to make friends in different schools. On a more personal level, we want to foster confidence and creativity for students who are interested in debate. Uh, the both of us have also participated in World Scholars Cup and MUN events many times and greatly enjoyed them. Since KIS has never had an official debate club in the time that we have been here, we felt as though we can not only pass on our experiences to other students, but that our club can also over time become a support system for students with these similar interests. We currently have 27 members spread across grade nine to grade 12. And as for now, the club is restricted to high school only. With the support of our supervisors, Mr. Park and Mr. Reese, as well as our events coordinator, Ms. Shelley, we were able to come up with an online model for the club that allowed us to continue to operate over the pandemic. We have been meeting via Gather Town uh, on the previous slide, which is a more informal virtual meeting space that mimics the feeling of being in a real classroom. Um, could you go back a slide, please? So we practice two different styles of debate in our club. The first, as you can see on our screen right now, is the World Scholars Cup, abbreviated as WSC. The actual event is run by the World Scholars Cup organization, and um, it is hosted at a school or different event venues, depending on the actual round. In the competition, during the debate section, Two teams of three debate against each other on the affirmative and negative sides of a prompt. This prompt is given at the start of the debate and students are given only 15 minutes in order to prepare. There are other academic events that revolve around a curriculum of six subjects that change every single year. There are regional and global rounds, and of course, the tournament of champions held at Yale University. You can see on screen right now, the Bangkok Regional Round in 2019 and the, turn the Tournament of Champion Rounds at Yale University, also 2019. To attend the next event, so from regional to global and of course to the Tournament of Champions, you will have to qualify through team rank in one round to, to advance the next. Next slide, please. Unlike the World Scholars Cup, Model United Nations, also known as MUN or Model UN, isn't based around rounds, so if you miss one event, you can definitely go to others. Model, Model United Nations also has a much stricter rule of procedure that you have to follow and is planned by individual schools and secretariats. Each student is assigned a role as a delegate or as a chair. A delegate will have to represent the views of the country or person or organization assigned to them, regardless of their own personal views. This is one of the hardest parts of being a part of MUN, as often your own personal views will conflict with that of who or, and what you are representing. Chairs are in charge of running the entire committee. Each committee has a real life issue given to them beforehand that the delegates will have to resolve. Delegates will form blocks, which is essentially just a group, in order to create a resolution 
which is a document that will present their solution to the rest of the committee. Due to COVID-19, we unfortunately haven't been able to attend many events, but six of us were able to attend the online Thai MUN in March as both chairs and delegates. Notably, two of us were part of a new committee created by a KS student in the class of 2020. Four of us attended EIS MUN recently, and we are currently planning an online KIS MUN held in December with a secretariat pulled from our own debate club. And of course, with the help of our lovely supervisors and of course, Miss Shelley. And as we're slowly transitioning back into on-campus learning and the overall situation in Thailand improves, we really hope that in our final year of school, we can continue to make a difference to the KIS community by fostering student interest in more academic events. Our virtual KIS MUN success being a major upcoming goal. In fact, we've put a spin on the committees, which will be entirely historical, something that has ne not been done before in Bangkok. Ms. Shelley, our events coordinator, is extremely supportive in this process, and without her help, we would not be sure if we'd be able to make it happen. But with her help and the continued support of our supervisors, Mr. Reese and Mr. Park, we are confident. No? Okay, good. Wow. Uh, wouldn't be a live event without some sort of glitch. Sorry, guys. Um, I was just saying, I guess you didn't hear any of that, that we had talked about doing our Q&A before introducing uh, Mike Hirsch, our secondary school principal. I think since you guys have just heard from all of the students, you audience members, that now would be a really great time to ask them some questions. Um, so if Manit, you want to stop sharing the presentation so we can all kind of see each other and all of you in the audience, if you have any questions for our students, um, we'd really love to hear from you. We'd love to hear if you have any questions. Um, and actually to get that conversation going, I wanted to hear from you all about, we're approaching the end of our second week back on campus. Um, you, you alluded to that, Ray, and I'd love to hear from some of the rest of you, how is that to be back on campus? Um, you know, and what does that look like for the people in the audience that don't know how we've been handling the back to school hybrid uh, learning model? Um, I guess I'll go ahead and speak. Uh, so, as Ms. Keeney said, school began about physically, it began about two weeks ago, and luckily being in DP, um, I'm going to school almost every day, except Wednesdays on both days, um, and so far on both weeks, and so far, um, as a student, it's been absolutely amazing, because, of course, online learning was rather well done at KIS. Uh, physical learning has just a different touch uh, actually going to school where almost all students have said that they're even more motivated and they want to go out there and actually learn by staying in class rather than just keep their camera on because they have to um, and being in class you're also socializing a lot more so for a student like myself who not only learns better but is actually prefers a social environment it's just an amazing place to be at. And the fact that everyone is doing, everyone is wearing masks, they're sanitizing whenever they can, and doing the ATK test every two weeks kind of adds on and reassures me that even though that I am going to school, everyone is taking as much care as they need to and completing all of the safety procedures that need to be done. Thanks, Yash. Does anyone else have something that they'd like to add about what it's been like to go back? um to in-person learning um i'd like to say something if that's fine um i personally think it's great especially for us grade 11 and 12 because we got a lot ahead especially with the university applications that we have to go get going on um but other than that with the education it's also helping socially because we haven't been able to see each other for months and when i'm talking months i mean a very very long time and it's so good to see faces again in person and actually interact with them at like 24 7 for the whole day other than being stuck on the screen and burning our eyes out on the computers but i in my opinion i think it's so good to be back thanks kaden would anyone else like to say something uh i can go <laughs> I personally agree with Kaden and Yash entirely. 
being able to be back in school in the classroom face to face with our teachers has seriously helped. I personally am a person who loves asking questions for clarification. So just being in front of the teacher, being able to ask them questions constantly has really helped me with learning and just feeling more confident in school. Thanks, Renek. I think, Ray, you had your hand up. Thank you, Ms. Celine. Um, I just wanted to say that initially I was nervous about going back to school because I was worried that once again we'd get disrupted. But ever since we've been back on campus, I felt so incredibly safe um, amongst my peers and amongst my teachers. And that's as a result of the safety measures that have been put into place by KIS. And going back a little bit to our presentation, it's amazing that Ambi and I can now actually plan events in person, which adds a completely different element to it. It makes things so much easier. Communication flows much smoother. So yeah. That's great. I actually got um, a question that was sent directly to me and I might have to direct this to you, Mike, because it's a great question. I think we should address it. But um, there was a question about what are the achievements of Thai students? Um, in terms of university acceptances. And I, I know we have a lot of Thai students in this group. So I, don't, I, I think students, you guys can, can share. Um, and if you have any stories about your peers and, and Mike, if you wanna add in, um, I, I think that that's a really important question that I'm sure a lot of audience members have. Sure. Um, in terms of our Thai students, they don't really represent a, a different demographic than the rest of our population. Um, we don't see different outcomes. Uh, so when we look at our students for university applications, they're focused on Canada, they're focused on the United States, they're focused on the UK, they're focused on uh, the Netherlands, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Uh, we're starting to see a bit more Australia, and then we see students looking at universities, um, sometimes based upon their own uh, passport, or we do have some students also looking at Japan because there's some really good uh, scholarship opportunities in Japan. I'd say what's unique with our Thai students is that they are looking at staying in Thailand for the sort of credentialing type programs. So Thai medical school, Thai dental school, um, you know, those would be some things that would be unique to our, our Thai population. Um, but outside of that, we really don't have meaningfully different outcomes in terms of university progression for our Thai versus our international students. Thanks, Mike. Um, do any of the students have information anecdotally that you wanna share about that? I know we were asking about university acceptances, but I think this kind of speaks to the, the community um, of KIS. Do you as students um, feel a distinction or if someone arrives on campus and doesn't speak Thai. How do you guys um, handle that? I have a friend who came from a Thai school. They speak Thai most of the time and they've, they've been working on their English skills. So what I would do is I would try to speak English with them as much as possible because if they don't understand, really understand, I could speak Thai with them and translate things for them. And I would also recommend them books from the, our library because there's many comics or short novels that my friend can read. Thanks, Jaya. Davishi? I think in terms of being like a non-Thai student and coming into the school where there's like a lot of Thai speakers, it's not um, as like intimidating or as difficult blending in with everyone as it seems at first, because uh, the community in general is very welcoming, whether you're from the country or not. Thanks, Tavishi. Um, we have a great question about um, child protection. So I think I have to defer this one to you, Mike, but asking about online safety certification and um, background checks and teacher for teachers, faculty and staff. Sure, I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, you know, we say for our school that student, excuse me, student safety is the most important thing. We start with student safety first and, and then we talk about student learning. Um, so we have a, a comprehensive child protection policy uh, that's in place 
And that really weaves itself across the whole entire program. Um, to start with, in terms of recruitment, uh, we have a bunch of protocol that are in place. Uh, every person who's hired by KIS, regardless of whether they're academic staff or non-academic staff, uh, gets interviewed by two people. Um, everyone needs to have a police check. Uh, everyone needs to have a police check from the, where the, the country they're coming from, as well as uh, the country that they uh, are originally from. We also do uh, reference checks for everybody. Um, a lot of schools will use services like associates or ISS where people can post uh, references. Um, it's a bit old school. You don't see it too much that sometimes teachers have testimonials where someone has written them a, a letter of reference that's several years old. Those are not acceptable for us at KIS. So we might look at those things if they're up on a website, um, but they don't count towards our references. So we have our own specific form that explicitly asks about matters related, whether people are safe to work with children or not, uh, whether there's any child protection concerns, and all of our referees have to uh, answer those questions. Uh, we also will do at least a minimum of one follow-up phone call, and the references all need to come from professional email addresses. So people can't use Gmail addresses or Hotmail addresses. Um, a teacher who would be getting hired from KIS would have to have a .kis.ac.th uh, address, so we know it's a professional, not sort of made up identity, you know, something like that. Uh, in terms of online safety, uh, basically we use a lot of the same strategies that we use online as we use in face-to-face -face learning at school. So we talk about the difference between private and public spaces, and we don't want to have private places in a school. Um, so we have nice, beautiful glass windows throughout our campus, uh, and we also have a widespread uh, CCTV network uh, throughout the school uh, so that, um, you know, there aren't sort of these nooks and crannies where uh, things might happen that, uh, you know, you may not want to have happen in a school. Um, we have similar guidance, which is we don't meet with students one on one in an online context without sharing a record of the, the link publicly. So that would be shared uh, with an administrator, it'd be available up on the, uh, you know, class website, that sort of thing. Um, and so also we exclusively use then two systems. So all of our meetings are only happening through Zoom accounts in the primary school and through uh, Google Meets in the secondary school. So that creates the same type of sort of safety and the same type of supervision because they're doing all of the formal communication through that network. Um, and so they're not using other personal email addresses. They're not using um, instant messaging services through line or through other things like that. When teachers and students are communicating, they're only using through official channels which means that teachers know that their communication is being supervised by the school if necessary. Uh, and so that also gives them protection because they know they're above reproach, um, that they can uh, you know, know that that's been taken care of for them. Uh, so I think those are the major, major points. And this is something that we work really, really hard on. Uh, it's something that's part of our CIS accreditation. Uh, in CIS, there's what are called core standards. And these are uh, standards that if you fail them, you lose your accreditation or your accreditation is not awarded. And so they're more important uh, than other standards. Uh, and so we have good standing with CIS and uh, we got commendations on our child protection program as the uh, work as a result of the hard work that we did on that. Uh, Ms. June and I attended several conferences where we spoke with international experts on the subject and we infused all of that into designing our child protection program. We currently have a child protection lead who oversees child protection for the whole school, which is Miss Christina, and we work as a team on any child protection matters that come up. Uh, hopefully that was enough and not too much. <laughs> that was a lot. I think our students probably learned a lot today with that one. <laughs> <They're very cool>. um, <laughs> but maybe there's something that um, one of you students can add as as your peers you know what does that support system look like for you if you either you observe um a friend that you're worried about or you yourself are struggling with something what kind of support systems are in place um for for you to feel safe or or supported maybe you can elaborate on that personally here i feel like um for me personally uh the teachers and my friends here like they're kind of on like in the equal stage of like being supportive. And especially for our grade, almost everyone 
like even though there are specific friend groups almost everyone is friends with each other so if someone sees you being sad they would come up to you and be like hey are you okay no matter how close you are to them and also the sc student council here they're very um supportive like even if they don't know you they'll just come up to you you know ask you how you are as well as the teachers the counselors here are very very helpful and they're like not judgmental you can tell you, you can tell them whatever you want and they'll find you know some way to help you out so that's really like you know that's what i love about coming to school especially <laughs> hi sadie um just to add on to that just a little bit about the sorry, sorry. Is there like echoing no um there's a, a bot that misunderstood my pronunciation of your name you can probably guess that the, the name but oh. i won't say <laughs> okay. um, just to elaborate on what Sonia was saying about kind of the teacher support system, I feel like because everyone's really close, um, like you can just go to any teacher and they'll kind of help you with what you're like, if you had any struggles with any assignments or just if you're going through stuff at home. I think they're also very understanding with like adjusting assignment deadlines and stuff like that. So if you just need to like send them an email or just say like, can I get this to you? tomorrow or like the next day they're very understanding um, that we have like personal lives as well and just help out with that thanks sadie um yes do you want to add something yeah um especially during online learning things for many people haven't been um as amazing as they could have been people are going through certain scenarios that nobody wants them to go through and these have not been the best of times um but uh and recently this was brought forward to many students and it's become obvious to us as students as well that we can reach out to the counselors here the teachers here anyone here um and ask them for help or just talk to them about these things um the counselors have a protocol ready they're ready to provide as much support as they can to help make sure that whatever it is that you're going through is if not solved at least made a little bit better thanks that's great um and i have to just comment that i was really impressed that um a couple days before school started i i received an email from you asking me for you know the names of the new students because you had work to do and i've i've come from a different school where that responsibility rested entirely on the admissions and academic teams and i was completely floored. I said, wait, what's what's going on? <laughs> so I did want to commend you publicly that um, I know how seriously you take your job and how how much you care for the kids. And it's it's really impressive. It's really impressive to see that initiative on the part of the students. Um, we are actually kind of at at, um, at time and I, I want to give time for Mike to talk about the new program that's coming up. Um, if you do have any more questions, hopefully we can stick around and answer them. But I did want um, to turn the, the mic over back to you, uh, Mike, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> and uh, you could tell us a little bit about IBCP. <laughs> sure, thank you. Uh, I'll try to keep it relatively short. Um, I think it really is a nice extension to the conversation that we've had, been having already in terms of, we saw all these really amazing, wonderful students who are all being successful in different ways. And to us, that's really what adding another IB program uh, is all about. Uh, we are a three program school already, and we will be a four program school for the start of August 2022, where, we're, where we will be adding the IB careers related program. And what the IB careers related program does is allow students who are a little bit more focused and who know maybe that they want to have a certain type of career already to have a slightly more focused and a slightly more narrow um, curriculum. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about the two service providers that we're going to be partnering with so you get a little bit of an idea of um, the focus areas of our careers uh, related program. We are going to be partnering with Savannah College of Art and Design, one of the most famous art and design uh, colleges in the United States. And we're also going to be partnering with a school called SUMAS, which is a sustainability management school in Switzerland. Uh, the SUMAS is a, a business school that has a focus on sustainability. Um, and so if we go to the next slide, we can look at what the offerings are. So for, uh, for SCAD, they have uh, 10 different pathways. Um, and so some of those courses will have overlaps 
between uh, shared coursework, and then some of those will have more specialized types of programs. Uh, but you can see that kids get to do a deep dive in subjects uh, where I believe they take five courses over two years through the university um, and get to study these topics at a much more sophisticated, deep level than they would normally in, in a high school experience. They take these courses uh, alongside uh, the courses that they will use to graduate KIS with the KIS high school diploma, diploma. Um, and then they will also be taking two uh, IB diploma courses as well. So we have courses like adver advertising and branding, business and beauty, business of beauty and fragrance, graphic design, interactive design and game development, fashion marketing and management, uh, photography, sequential art, social strategy and management. And you can think about some of our DP course offerings that would align with those um, those courses to further supplement that study. So students who are doing programs like social strategy and management, they can also be taking our business, business and management course uh, at KIS. Students who are doing graphic design, they can be taking both our DP visual arts course and our B DP design technology course. So they can have an incredibly rich and developed portfolio uh, by the time they head off to university. Uh, next slide, please. Um, for SCAD, they give an incredible 25 credits. Um, so that goes into your, if you were to study at SCAD for university, those credits uh, transfer directly over, which is a huge amount of value for money. Um, but they're a really renowned school. And so um, if you were to transfer to uh, another, another school in the art design space, those credits would be very transferable as well. One of the other things that's unique about the SCAD program is that a lot of the programs qualify as STEM programs. And so if you graduate from the United States, normally you have access to a one-year a one F1 visa. Uh, however, students who are in the STEM fields actually have an automatic two-year F1 visa extension. Um, so that creates some really great opportunities for recovering that significant investment you've made in a US uh, university education. For SUMAS, they've got three pathways. Um, all of them have to do with the concept of business and uh, management and sustainability. Uh, so one of those areas is sustainable fashion. Uh, the other one is hospitality with a focus on sustainability. And then lastly is natural conservation. And so the idea would be that if you're gonna be working in that NGO space on environmental issues, you also have to have business acumen. You need to be able to um, manage fundraising. You need to manage your brand so that you can have a successful uh, NGO working on environmental issues. The hospitality program is aligned with if you want to study at SUMAS, but because the program really gets into um, advanced coursework, it also aligns with the most uh, world-renowned uh, hospitality programs in Switzerland, the United States, the Netherlands, Australia as well. So uh, it really would be difficult to have a, a better preparation for that those types of hospitality programs in university, if that's your goal. Uh, next slide. I think that's it for me. So hopefully that was uh, some useful information. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And, uh, and thank you to all of the students who have um, been at school and now online for quite a long time today. I really don't want to take up any more of your time because I'm really, really grateful. Uh, for everything you guys have shared. And I know everyone needs to probably go and eat dinner and probably do some homework. So thank you to all the audience members. Uh, we had a really amazing turnout tonight. I don't know if the students re uh, realize we had over 100 people participating. So thank you all for all your hard work. Round of applause. And thank you, audience members. Uh, for being with us tonight. It's truly been an honor. If you have any questions for the admissions team, um, please send us an email or you can go to our website, uh, admissions at kis.ac.th. I've sent it in the chat. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I hope to meet some of you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.